Hello, hello. All right, I think we are live. Hello, everyone. Please let me know if you can see me and if you can hear me all right. But from my side, looks like everything, every system go. Um, I had to update a few things, so just want to check that audio-wise, everything is is working well. <clears throat> hey Maverick Maverick Design How's it going? I'm not sure I'm 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 assuming you're Victor <laughs> Maverick Designs. Cool. Um, all right. So we completed that uh, stylized character in the last couple of streams. So I thought we can start with something new. Um, don't know how long it would take the next, uh, you know, the next concept. <laughs> uh, Marek Design, you're not. Oh, sorry. I thought thought it might be Victor, um, just because of the name Maverick Designs. But uh, glad to have you here anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I was saying this this is going to be a new concept, new idea, um, new piece. Again, just just trying to to show you different techniques, different processes, um, different ideas of how to approach uh, your your modeling, your sculpting. And so let's go ahead and just jump straight into something new uh, that uh, I don't know something that I haven't really done much in the recent in the recent months. Um, so I'm just going to do kind of like a hard surface mecha, like an organic hard surface modeling, if that makes sense. So something that has a little bit of both worlds so that uh, it appeals to um, to everyone. So before I get into the the blocking, because uh, by the way, what I'm planning to do, I don't have like a, a, a specific view of the design itself. Um, that's part of the idea to, to jump into the design as we go. But... I have I, I have a rough estimate of um, the things that I want to add or like what I want to create and it's going to be uh, kind of like um like a suit like a like an escafandra type of thing like um uh, like a scuba dive massive type of um like suit <laughs> and yeah so it's something like sci-fi something like that um, so we're gonna go into that and we're gonna basically just dive into the sketching before we go into the modeling or into the, the concept in 3D. Um, it's going to be really sketchy, really uh, really fluid in that sense. So hopefully that gives you uh, some ideas. Uh, can I please show you how create combat tactical finger gloves? Um, sorry, that's a, that's a very specific question. And this, you know, like if you if you type something like that in, in YouTube, for example, just to find references is going to be very hard to find something that specific. Um, so what I would recommend is to just think about simple ways of, of achieving similar things. So for instance, if you want to create a glove, um, this the closest thing that you can find easily would be um, just a hand, <laughs> right? And then you can create that glow from that. So it's a very, very specific thing, but I'm sure some of the techniques that I'm going to show you today uh, might help you get an idea of how you can create something similar. So yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, I'm going to start sketching an idea just to, to give you an idea of what I'm going to be doing. So um, I'm going to start with something like that. And this is going to be the, the rough sketch of the mecha. Let's see. Uh, and this is obviously zeroish. I'm using the quick sketch uh, tool, which is again something that I don't see a lot of people using. I I use it all the time in my personal work, and um, I just find it like really easy. 
um, it's that's why I have it in here in my UI quick sketch. And it's basically if you haven't used it, if you haven't seen this tool in ZBrush, uh, it ultimately just creates. Uh, it's kind of like a macro ultimately, like that creates a uh, a drawing or a or a sketching brush, and it also sets a few things like a a plane that has one million polygons, and it sets the camera like the front camera, and yeah, it allows you to sketch. This is 2D, but again, it's just to give you a an idea of what I'm going to be aiming for. Super sketchy, but you know. It should it should give you an idea. And this is kind of like also part of what I want to do. I want to keep things super sketchy and super fluid in the in the three D department. So once I jump into three D, it's gonna be pretty sketchy, but um, it's gonna be enough to give you an example of the of the concept. So um. Uh, yeah, so this is <laughs> roughly what I want to create. It's um, maybe we can do some kind of like larger boots or something like that. So it's not as you know, maybe picking up the legs. I don't know. This is still pretty sketchy, um, but it's to give us an idea. Uh, these things right here. Maybe let's do it with a different color. Uh, yeah, I'm using um, an alpha as well. So basically, oh uh, no. Uh, made a mistake. Cool. So I'm um, sorry about that. So basically, these things that you see in here, the the idea is to create like some mechanical parts that are also attached to some kind of harness at the back, or you know, the the whole suit or the whole thing is going to be pretty bulky. Um, so I'm just gonna refine a little bit the the outline so you can see the definition of this a bit better. So even though they're gonna be, well, the, the intention is to create some hard of uh, some hard surface modeling pieces. They're gonna be very organic. And what I mean by that is that you won't see like a lot of like super hard uh, polish edges. It's gonna be more about the uh, the material treatment of it. So I wanna keep it like super organic. Like I said, I'm still I'm still not decided to. Um, I haven't decided what this is going to be, but just have a a base idea. Okay, I think that should give you a reference of what I'm gonna be aiming for. Um, the design is going to be more. You know, we're gonna explore more of the things once we get into to um, to 3D. So I'm gonna unlock the camera, um, and you'll see this is just a plain 3D. Right, that has one million polygons, and then you have the pen shadow to to sketch in in ZBrush. Uh, so it's a, a pretty cool tool, uh, but it's just creating a. You can duplicate the same thing, right? So this is roughly um, photos. This is roughly what we're gonna try to do, like a sketch for like a bulky mecha type of yeah character. So we're gonna work on a concept. Alrighty, so um, let's go ahead. 
and enable symmetry and I have a simple sphere we're gonna start with this uh, we're gonna probably dynamish this to a very low resolution lower than that right so 24 that's that's plenty so we're gonna be using lots of different sub tools and duplicate things it's gonna be very very messy but fluid <laughs> process just to get something going okay uh, which tool is it? W which one are you referring to? All right, so I'm going to start by uh, duplicating. So this is this could be the head, but I'm just going to duplicate it, and I'm going to start blocking out a body. just by scaling and um, pulling and pushing simple geometry. Uh, so we're gonna create a silhouette first. So let's just duplicate that again. And you'll notice that I'm, I'm kind of like angling this thing just to create a bit more of a, of movement. something like that all right so we have almost the torso ready um, I'm gonna bring in oh you know what let's duplicate this as well so it's kind of like the belly area I just want to create some volume here for the you know the hips or the yeah the hip area like that so this is the belly this is the the chest and, and back and the head um, let me let me bring the epic pen so that um cuz at this stage this is pretty abstract <laughs> so i just want to keep them keep you guys updated with what i'm actually doing in case you're following along so let's go head that's going to be the head yeah um let's rip cage uh, belly and hips All right so that's if you if we go back to that concept or that quick uh, thumbnail this is gonna be like that helmet head. <laughs> um, and this is kind of like the torso so uh, the next thing that we need to block out really quickly are kind of like some thick long arms and the legs as well uh, so let's go ahead and do that and I'll have a look at the at the chat in just a second. Um, all right, so for the arms and hands, we can again we can use cylinders, things like that. But I think it's just gonna be easier for this type of concept if we use something like the curved tubes, right? And we just go for a large brush, something like this. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that for for the legs. Right, we will tweak them later. They're like way too big, but I think that that's a simple blockout. And let's do the same thing for the arms. And I'm doing this in uh, adding this in the hip, so we'll have to split them after. So let's do something like this first. And maybe we can also rotate this. And this is what I like about using like this type of insert brushes. Because ultimately the tubes um, are just that. Curved brushes. And then for the forearm, we'll go for something thicker. So let's go with a larger brush. Okay. All right, so um, we can go ahead and split everything. So let's go ahead and click on split, group split. Click OK. So that gave us, gave us all these different pieces separately. Um, 
I'm going to take that head, duplicate that, and I'm going to use that sphere to create some kind of um, oops, stone of symmetry, like a shoulder pad. Like this and I'm gonna mirror and weld that so we have it both sides so you still you see start to to come together and this is like super basic um, you know this is something that I would do if I'm iterating and figuring out how the design like I said I would do this uh, like even at this level I could just um, you know create maybe let's turn on the thumbnail um, hang on uh, thumbnail if you want to see just the silhouette and not the background uh, which is my preferred way of using the thumbnail I'm going to change in the preferences thumbnail change the background to a black color pure black and zeros will interpret that as transparent uh, so at, again at this level I can just have a very simple idea of what the the silhouette looks like and I can take a screenshot of that and then go into Photoshop or, or something like that and, and just um, refine the sketch and paint over uh, and sometimes I do these um, I, I, I follow this process I do a few sketches like at this level like I don't do anything else than this um, just to get the blocking right the, the silhouette and I took uh, I take a, a screenshots of this and like I said it could be 10 15 of these very simple things that I can produce really quickly and then I just send it to my iPad for example and then um, just watching Netflix or whatever I just I just go over the uh, the sketches and just to refine that idea and then come back in zeros and then I already have uh, a more defined sketch that I can sort of like follow but um, this is kind of like the beauty of this process it could be very very simple and you don't have to uh, resource to any sculpting or anything just to get the the basis right all right um uh which tool for sketching okay so yeah that's uh thanks thanks guys yeah it's the pen shadow um if you go to draw i think it's in draw i forgot what it is i think it might be document now it should be there's a plugin here we go so if you go to uh, zip plugin and click on quick sketch Zbrush is going to set a um, a flat uh, material, select that pen, create a plane, and then you can just start um, literally painting, like I was just doing. Uh, so I use this quite a lot, um, quite a bit. Not in these streams, I don't use it much in here, but it's um it's a really handy tool for sketching directly in Zbrush. That it's just there, and that's why I have it in here. So to give you an idea of how I use it, um, I just create this sketch and then take a screenshot or I just save it uh, well take a screenshot and save it into a pure ref so I can do multiple thumbnails using that uh, quick sketch put everything into a big document um, of pure ref and then I have thumbnails to iterate that's how I use it uh, yes I use these spheres all the time most or mostly like this um, no, I use C-spheres all the time. I just think this is um, a very simple and quick way to uh, to to iterate and to create, um, you know, design rather than following something. C-spheres is great as well, but um, what I would do is set up the bases and then just split things a lot more. So this this method allows me to already have everything split into parts to to tweak them. So let me just show you a, a few more things that we can do um, with this with this stuff. Um, Let's take let's take the head, duplicate that, and I'm just gonna create kind of like the the boots of this guy. So I'm gonna start using something like the uh, the flatten deformer, right? Something like this. And mirror and weld. Oh, those those shoes are not <laughs> not great. Um, makes it looks a bit silly, but that's alright. Um, for the hands, I don't I don't think I'm gonna use hands like finger stuff. Um, I'm 
probably use I'm gonna use some kind of like I don't know uh, I just don't want to have hands on this one <laughs> um okay I'm gonna select the torso duplicate that and this is gonna help with that sense of bulkiness it's kind of like a you know what I think this could be like um like a whole suit for like one of those jetpacks type of thing maybe that'll be cool So maybe those those things they it, they're not part of the creature's arms or the character arms. They're just part of the suit already. So yeah, we'll try that. See how it goes. Um, let's use the bin. No, hang on. Uh, taper deformant. That's the one I'm looking for. Just to taper this thing up a bit. Uh, and we can also use the bent arc to bend it towards the kind of like follow that curvature a little bit more okay um, this is definitely gonna be a lot bulkier I hope um, but to get started this is good um, I'm gonna also show you something else so basically this is super easy you just start with a with a simple sphere you can duplicate it move it around uh, the arms are done with the tube brush um, but you can also click on append and use any of the tools that you have here the 3d meshes I'm gonna bring in a ring 3d and I'm just gonna use that to bulk up that sort of neck area uh, maybe we can use the inflate brush as well just to thicken, thicken that up Um, we can duplicate that and I just want to again start playing around these are this is still super blocky right but we can start playing around with some ideas that you know of how things are going to be connected so this is just a reference of um, you know this piece could be like a massive strap that plugs into the into the armor or something <laughs> um, yeah at, at this at this stage because I'm designing as I go, it's pretty abstract. Um, I just have a, a, a rough idea of what I'm going, but this could change quite a bit. Um, alrighty. Yeah, I think that looks good. So I'm going to select these arms, and because I use the tube brush, this is pretty clean geometry, so I can use this to uh, create other type of geometry that is pretty cool. So for instance, I'm going to select that, duplicate it, and if I want to thicken this up and just add kind of like plates and other pieces, I can use this tool to do that. So um, I'm going to keep it simple, and I'm going to use the select lasso. Uh, let's turn off symmetry and we can concentrate on one side. So delete hidden so this is a duplicate of that arm um, and I just deleted one of the sides so then I want to work on this one and then mirror it to the other side so let's hide a portion of it and let's check yeah that portion seems to be alright delete hidden right um, we can close this and that's a uh, you know, you can either use the close holes to get something like this, or if you want to maintain the the nice topology, uh, you can use the Simodra. Again, the nice topology that I have right now is going is going to be gone soon. <laughs> uh, we're going to use Sculptris Pro and, and Dynamesh, but you know, just in case you want to keep that clean for whatever reason. Um, for instance, if you're following a specific design already, uh, you know where you're going. It's probably best to uh, to try to control the base meshes. With a nice topology from the beginning, but because I'm, I'm sketching and figuring things out, I don't mind destroying things and then uh, come coming back and, and fix them. <laughs> cool, Darren. I'm um, glad that that helps. Alrighty, so I'm gonna right click on the edge and go to close, and I'm gonna click on convex hull. Uh, concave hull is just gonna give you basically the same thing as filling the gaps. So this is going to be the same thing uh, so with this one with the convex one I can click and drag so you can determine how many loops and if you let me just do that again from a different angle so if you click and drag and go up and down oh, it's not 
<laughs> it's not great. Let me show you this. So um, with the convex hole and the close hole, uh, let's say that this is your your click, right? I'm just gonna explain it here and then do it. Um, this is your click. If you go up and down, it's just going to add loops. So I think it's up and down, but if not, it will be left and right. But if you go left and right, it's going to uh, change the kind of like the bulginess of it, like the flatness. Um, so yeah, let me show you what that means. So I'm gonna click that close the hole without releasing the click. If I go up, I just add loops or down to reduce them. And if I go left or right, it's going to flatten this or add a little bit of bulkiness, right? So I can go di diagonally to uh, play around with both. So let's just set a, a tiny bit, right? And the good thing about the C model as well is that it would remember the latest or the last setting. So all I have to do in the next one is just click once and it will have exactly the same amount of loops and distance and all of that. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and hold Control and W just to sign a single polygroup. Get out of solo mode. Um, so now this is is weird here just because they're coplanar, so they're just in the same space. But let's go ahead and use the inflate brush to give this a bit of thickness. All right, mirror and well. All right, so we now have this extra piece that we can use later on to, to adjust it um, even more. Um, I think for the elbows, what I'll do is I'm going to reuse one of these ones. So let's duplicate that. So this is kind of like the deltoid. Oh, this is another thing. Um, I've I've talked about this in previous streams, but I'm using symmetry in these individual pieces, right? If I click in the center, they're going to be scaled towards the center of the of the scene or the center line. Um, so if I want to scale them just individually, I just need to enable local symmetry, which for you guys will be on the transform palette right here. So now. I can transform locally, not globally. That's what that means. Um, all right, so I'm just going to something like this. So that's going to be in place for the elbow area. Um, cool. Let's work on the on the legs a little bit. Uh, I think it's it's mostly about doing the same thing that I did for the arms. So in fact, let's just select that, duplicate, do the same thing. So I'm gonna hide. Oops, turn off symmetry, hide those, delete hidden, and then uh, we can do something similar. This time I'm just gonna have two uh, two pieces, so that is a lot easier. So let's hide that cap, that one as well. Turn on double so that I can see both sides. Um, and delete hidden. And then I can take that middle loop, let's say here is where the knee would be. I can take the select lasso, hold control and shift, and that would hide that loop, right? So I think, you know what, may, maybe let's use this C modular to right click on the edge, go to bevel, and then just bevel that a bit. And that way, you know, we can just delete something right in the middle, delete hidden. Cool. Um, and then we can do the same thing that we did for the arm if you wanted to. Otherwise, you can just keep it open. Right click, uh, close, convex hole, click, drag, click, click, and click. Let's go to Auto groups, so it creates two different groups for the two different pieces. Uh, just so we can work separately, I'm gonna split groups, or uh, you can use the tool that I used before. So if you have different groups, you click on uh, group split, or uh, you can just use the select rectangular to hide something and then split hidden instead of delete, obviously. Split hidden, and that creates two different pieces. So I'm gonna inflate that one, and then go to the next one, and inflate that one. And then I'm going to do mirror and weld. Ah, uh, whoops. Before I do that, before I mirror and weld, uh, because I have local symmetry, 
it works also uh, when it mirrors and well things. So if you have local symmetry enabled, Zebras is not going to mirror it based on the center line, right? So yeah. So if this is on, right, when you mirror and weld it, expecting to be mirrored and weld on the other side, because Zebras is not using the center line uh, because this is enabled, uh, it's just going to find the the center line based on the volume that you have, and it's going to mirror and weld this piece to the other side. So that's why it didn't work. Um, so all I have to do is disable that, mirror and weld, and that way it works. Same thing here. And turn this off. Cool. So now we're starting to to get something going. Um, but at this stage, even if we look at it from the distance and enable thumbnail, uh, well, the thumbnail is pretty tiny, but this is, um, you know, this, this gives you already a good understanding of what the, the silhouette is. And this is like super important when you are designing things uh, in 3D, especially because <laughs> you're going to be able to see it from every angle, right? But that gives you a good idea of where you're going um, without spending too much detailing or anything. So I'm not even thinking about anything related to sculpting at the moment. All I'm doing is just uh, setting up pieces. <laughs> and this is, uh, this is the blocking, right? Okay, so uh, let me know if there is any questions so far in the chat or anything. I'm happy to answer them, answer them as I go. Cool. Alrighty. Um, well, okay, a couple more things. So <laughs> at this point, I'm just going to to try to integrate the, the silhouette, again, keeping everything super blocky, and then we're going to start using some insert brushes and stuff like that to put it all together. Um, just say you want to visualize all the pieces of your block up separately. Um, what, what does that mean? You mean like if I go into solo mode and I isolate that and I want to see that, but you want to see them all separately? Is that what you question? Let me know if that is the question, because if if it is, it's pretty easy. Um, oh, yeah, so if you want to see them different, like, it depends. For me, it's it's just easier this way, because I can have a, a visual of the entire thing. Uh, you can turn on polyframe and turn off line, and that would allow you to see the color of the piece that you're selected. Um, Otherwise, what you can do is fill with a, with a let, let's just do that just so that you know uh, it's done. You can go ahead and I don't know if there is a, there should be something. Um, let me just see, just to automate this process a bit. So polygroup, no, I think it's on the sub tool master. Let's see. Yeah, fill visible sub tools. No, that's with a single color. And it's probably not, um, an automated way to do it. Uh, but if we go to the top one, everything should have a different polygroup in theory. So if I go to polypaint, I can click on polypaint for polygroups from polygroups. Uh, so that means Zero is going to use whatever polygroup we have in here and it's going to fill that color. So I can just go ahead and click on that then go down with the arrow key on my keyboard, fill the next one and just go like this. Right. Um, these ones are the same, so all I have to do is just select a different polygroup, fill with color. Uh, let's do the same with this one. New polygroup, fill with color. New polygroup, fill with color. New polygroup, fill with color. Right. Yeah, so this is kind of like a working polypaint, and then you can see all the pieces uh, separately, which, you know, might be useful for some things, especially when you have lots of them. Um, and then if you want to turn them all together, you can hold the shift key and click on this brush icon and that's it. And then you can turn it back on holding shift and clicking them again. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully that, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, also, if you want to see them all separately, you can also hold shift X and that would explode things like this, right? Uh, and I can see there's some issue with this one right here. Maybe when I was 
moving <laughs> things. So um, I'm gonna go back and, and fix that in just a second, right? And Shift X to go back. Let's go into solo mode just to fix this. Uh, this one is an easy fix because the right hand side it works. So I'm gonna mirror it to flip it around and then mirror and well. Done. Um, alrighty. So no worries. Slow mo. Someday there will be lessons with substance. Uh, not in this channel. This is just dedicated for serious stuff. Uh, but I do have um, you know, my course is is primarily using <laughs> that tool for texturing. So if you're interested, uh, it, it is closed now the the course. But that's what we talked about in the course. Um, is that work for substance import? I'm not. Oh, you mean if I can take? Yeah, I can take this into substance. I mean, I won't do it in this channel, but yeah, this there's no yeah there's no reason why. Um, but let's go ahead and move forward so that you can see a little bit more of the the ideas. So I'm gonna use the move brush with AccuCurve just to get some more of a like a pointy effect like this. Make sure uh, symmetry is enabled. Uh, I'm gonna start working on kind of like moving away from that um, very you know. Um, geometrical shape, suppose. So I'm just holding the Alt key to select the pieces. And then using the move brush to just um, alter them. Um, mirror, mirror and weld. Make sure that symmetry is enabled so I can work with all the pieces together. Concentrate here on that this belly area. And a bit on the hips as well. This is kind of like a giant nappy. Okay, I'm I'm doing this fairly quick, but just so that you can see a bit of the process, and then we move into the the fun part. And I think we need some um, kneecaps, some things for the kneecaps. Hopefully you can have a, a rough idea of what I'm going with this. The next step would be uh, pretty fun. I, I'm sure that you, you'll enjoy the next step. But this one is the most important one. <laughs> um, I know I keep saying this and if you follow the, the work that I do and the and the streams here, um, I always say that, but it's it's true. Like I, I don't get tired of saying it because this this is the most important part of the process. Just making sure that at a at a silhouette level it works, and then adding details. You know, it's super easy. We we can use some of the custom brushes and stuff like that. Um, which oh by the way, <laughs> I just remember something. Um, uh, let me just finish this step and then I'll I'll get to it because. Uh, it might be something you're interested in. So I don't know if you, um, if you guys here are part of my email list. I send an email today um, with some tips and tricks for uh, automatic retopology, which are pretty cool. Uh, but there's also a couple of pretty cool news that I'm going to share with you in just a second.
Uh, also, one thing I should say is that the the reason I kept everything like super low res is purely because doing all of these changes and pulling and pushing things at this level, it's super easy to do just with the um, um, with low res. If I had more resolution, like like you know high res sculptures or um, dynamish, it wouldn't be as fluid as what I'm doing right now. Okay, we'll have to work on the breaking the silhouette a little bit more later. Um, you know what, this is, I probably need more resolution than this, so I'm just going to divide and delete lower. So just to have a bit more resolution there. Uh, but still, you know, uh, we can we can totally break that later. I just want to be able to define this line just a tiny bit more. Um, and let's go ahead and I'm going to show you one method, one extra method um, aside from the ones that I show you to add pieces. So I'm just going to use the insert primitive brush. I'm going to select uh, a polysphere and click and drag here. Uh, automatically, it doesn't matter which one I'm using, it's going to mask out the rest. And then I can click on split. Whoops, not that one. Split on mask points uh, so that we can have these pieces separately. Let's go back to the move brush. And we can bring that in there. Local symmetry, so I can tweak those. We'll get back to the, to the sculpting and we'll have to modify a little bit um, the stuff. But I think I'm, I'm happy with this as a starting point. Again, this probably is going to change quite a bit. So the before I show you what I, what I mentioned is that um, I want to just click on this. I want to create a new folder. I want to call this one OR. And I'm just going to drop everything in there. So we can keep everything organized in this tool. All right, so we have everything in, in that folder. Um, uh, hang on a second. Once you finish blocking out your basic shapes, um, what is your preferred method of joining them to further sculpting. Um, yeah, this is what I'm going to be showing you. Uh, I'll probably want to join all of them, uh, just the ones that I need, but because I want to keep everything kind of like organic panels. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Um, I think it depends on which computer you have in the first place. I don't know what that means or what it's referring to. Hola Alberto, saludos. Um, comics legend, good to have you here, man. Um, I know you can talk about new features that are still involved in testing. Um, yeah, I can. I, um, I cannot disclose it, <laughs> but um, not at the moment. This, not at the moment, no. Um, how do you deal with the arms being lower polygon than the base? Um, everything is low polygon. Like at the moment, is a sketch. Like everything, I'm, I'm gonna change that in a second. But it's, I don't think right now. I don't think in terms of low res or high res. Uh, if you 
if you cannot stand looking at this in low res, you can select that piece and enable dynamic and that will give you um, a smoother version. But I'm not even worried about that just yet because um, the next stage is, uh, is uh, I'll deal with that in the next stage. So wh what I want to be clear about this process is that this is just a sketch, right? So uh, I'm, at this stage, I'm not even thinking about how am I going to retopologize or deal with textures or details or anything like that. I'm literally using ZBrush as a tool to um, to figure out the design pretty much as, you, as I would in Photoshop with um, just sketching things out. I'm not worried in Photoshop about how am I going to, to shade things to make it realistic or, you know, I'm just concentrating on building that design. So this is what I'm doing at this stage. Once I get to the point where everything is working and everything feels right, then I can start thinking, okay, maybe I can split this part around and do retopology, that sort of thing. So uh, at this point, that's not what I'm doing. Uh, what is your V1 set of subtool menu? Uh, so those are visual groups. Uh, that's a good question. So if I want to be able to um, to actually see the arms, for example, individually, but I don't want to have to find them here and make sure that I turn the right thing on and off. Um, what I can do is in V1, they're called vis visibility groups or visibility sets. If I click on V2, you'll see, uh, because I had that selected, that's the one that I get, but I can go ahead and enable um, all the pieces that make up the arm like that. Uh, so if I switch back to V1, is the whole thing, and then V2 is just the arms. Then I can do the same thing with V3. Let's select the the legs. Go V3, and let's find the legs. These ones, and the kneecaps. Cool. So now I have visibility sets for the legs, the arms, and the body. Right. Um, that's it. Cool. Alrighty, so um, this is what, <laughs> this is what I was showing you. Oh, was going to show you when I started talking about you know that we can add details with uh, custom brushes. Um, so for those of you who are new to the stream or maybe that you haven't you know follow some of the the work that I do, um, let me just show you something. So um, I have a bunch of uh, online packs or not online, but they're online. But there are a bunch of zeroish packs that you can get. Um, so, for instance, the Geiger and Beksinski pack, this is something to create, um, let's make it a bit bigger, to create that sort of like surreal, creepy style, um, and all of these ones are available in the store, um, some of them are free, so like these ones are to, to sculpt hair, these ones are free from the Seabrush guides, um, you know, the, re the recent one that I released is this cloth and drapery one, that is just a bunch of different uh, brushes to deal with yeah with cloth and and drapery <laughs> um and yeah just wrinkles and things like that so for example um let me just show you a cool one right if i were to take i don't know this this guy yeah and just divide it quickly and i want to create wrinkles for this if this is like clothing i can just do that and then create those wrinkles like that um more than that Right, so those that that's the reason I said like I don't even think about details because I know when I get to that stage I will I will just use some of these custom brushes and it's gonna be pretty quickly. Um, that process is gonna be quick. <laughs> so anyway, the point is that all of these brushes are custom brushes that I built myself and I um, originally I just created this pack of brushes to work for my uh, projects and then I shared them online. Now the cool thing is that I'm planning a new live workshop. And it is ready if you wanna like kind of like subscribe to um, to get notified when the when I open enrollment for that. So I'll just share it here. Let me just give you an idea, and I'll put it here in the chat. Um, and the reason I share this one is because it's called the Asset Library Workshop, which means I'm gonna walk you through the entire process of building high quality custom assets um, like brushes in ZBrush, like the advanced brushes that I create. I'm going to show you exactly how I approach that, um, you know, how to create specific alphas for different uses, how to create PBR materials. So a bunch of different 
things like you know um, lighting scenarios, things that you can reuse in in your projects. So the idea is that in that workshop you can create your own assets for your own projects. Uh, but also, I'm gonna part of the workshop towards the end of the workshop, I'm planning to um, to show you kind of like how a bit of the marketing and how to promote yourself to um, to essentially ship your product. So if you do something that is really cool that you really like that you think is gonna be useful for um, for other people, you can also take that and I'll sh I'll show you how to kind of like package it in a way and, and show you some of the tools that I use so that you can sell them as well online, that sort of thing. So um, that's the idea. Again, I don't have the dates right now, but if you go to this link, you can scroll down. Um, this is kind of like one of the testing objects that I'm going to give away in the, in the workshop, the one in the background. Just put your name and email in here and yeah, click on cool, let me know. You'll receive an email and then you have to confirm that subscription so that you get the emails. Um, and once I have the dates and everything, um, I will open enrollment. And if you're part of the list, um, yeah, you will be the first to know when that is ready. But yeah, it's 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 pretty cool because it's it's about building assets to speed up your own workflows. Um, cool. Um, alrighty. Um, Alrighty, so let's go ahead and continue with this. So what I'll do um, is, where were we? So I have, a, <laughs> I have a folder called Originals. So if I wanna further explore, let's say the, the silhouette of this guy, but I don't wanna do it bit by bit, like on a per subtool basis, um, I'm gonna combine these together into one. So uh, what kind of level should, you be in Sivers to attend? Oh, for the you mean for the workshop? So um, it it doesn't have to be like you just need to know how to uh to move through the interface. I think the the um, uh, that's a good question. The the workshop is more aimed to kind of like intermediate users because I'm gonna talk about like some of the advanced features that I use to build my brushes and my um you know alphas and IMM brushes and things like that. So um. You you would be you would benefit more if you already know the basis of ZBrush in terms of the UI and, and things like that. But you don't have to be an expert. That's part of the workshop to to help you get to a, a better kind of like a skill level. Um, but we're we're also going to use um, Substance uh, Stager. We're going to use um, Blender. So a, a few different things. Again, if you're part of that email list, you'll get a notification with everything once everything is planned. At the moment, I'm currently setting things up. Uh, I usually spend a lot more time developing and planning the thing than actually doing it. So um, I'm at that stage at the moment. All right, so let's go ahead and come back to this. So I'm going to click on the gear icon and I'm going to merge folder. So what I'll what this does in ZBrush is it's taking everything that is in that folder and it creates a duplicate that is combined, right? So if I turn on the polyframe, this is a single mesh, meaning that I can take my, my move brush and do this, maybe symmetry and I can edit you know the silhouette so now this is like a bit more interesting but it, it all happens in all the subtools at once okay uh, so yeah this is a, a pretty cool option now um, one thing that I might do is click on unify and that makes it a, a bit smaller uh, just so that I don't have to create like these massive brushes or the brush size to to deal with it um, so it basically scales down the unified scales down things so that it works on the two by two by two units in Zverse. That's kind of like what Zverse likes. Um, cool. All right. And of course, after that, we can go ahead and split everything again. So it's not a it's not a big deal. Um, so I'm gonna use the move brush to just play around with the with the silhouette a little bit. I'm just doing little notches. I don't wanna change the the silhouette too much. And what's also cool is because we have different polygroups or different meshes, I'm gonna switch from the move brush to the uh, move topological. And the move topological respects topology. So I can click on, let's say the shoulder pads and you'll see I'm not moving everything. So it's going to only move the, the first polygroup that I, that I touched. Um, yeah, that I touched, <laughs> that's it. So I can just refine this a little bit.
uh, but yeah so this is pretty much what I was doing before but the cool thing is that if I wanted to I can just switch to the to the move brush let's say now and then I can move everything at once so that's that's one of the the cool things about it All right, so because we also have this, um, let's move on to the move topological again. Uh, because we have everything in a single mesh as well. I can do things like using the the inflate brush, and then just inflate everything even more if I wanted to. So there's benefits of both. Um, yeah, kind of like both methods. Uh, that's the reason why I like to to combine them, really. And you can still, because they're like different polygroups, you can still hold Control and Shift to isolate them, work on them, and bring back the rest, like so. So that's pretty cool. Alrighty, so the next step is um, is really fun and is starting to define things and maybe we can jump into some details or some reference of details using IMM brushes. Um, alrighty, so uh, what I'll do is we can, can, we can split things again. Um, so at this point I can keep everything in one subtool but I can also clone, let's clone this mesh. So Zbrush is going to create an exact duplicate, but it's a different tool. So this is the only thing we have in here. Um, and what I'll do is I'm going to click on Auto Group. That creates a single group for every single piece. Um, and then I can mirror and weld just to make sure that the left-hand side is exactly the same as the right-hand side in terms of the polygroups. And then I can go to Split Groups, click OK. And now Zbrush gives us basically what we had in the folder from the previous uh, from the previous tool, so I just combine everything to tweak it a little bit and then unify it. Now you can step this, you can skip this step if you wanted to. You can go to Z plugin, you can use the transpose master, click on T pose, right? Um, uh, let me just show you. So I can click on T pose. If you have multiple subtools, Siri so is going to combine them all together for you, right? And then you can use you know, basically exactly the same thing that I just show you like that. I'm just going to tweak things just for the sake of demonstration here. Right? So this is a single tool, right? Basically the same thing that we just did. Uh, manually, but this is kind of like automated. And then you can go to C plugin and click on T pose to subtools. And Siri is going to take whatever you change in whichever subtools you change them and bring them back to every single subtool. So you see, we have those changes and we still have everything separate. So that's probably like <laughs> an easy way to do it. I just want to show you the, the manual process as well. All right. So at this point, we can start playing around with some, um, yeah, with some sculpting. So I'm going to take this arm. Just give it a tiny bit more resolution so that we can see better. Um, and it's just dividing and deleting, deleting lower. I'm gonna do the same thing here, All right? I, I'm gonna end up with like millions of polygons. That's why I have lots of different subtools anyway. Uh, but at this stage, I can go ahead and let's go with the with the head, for example. I'm gonna turn on polyframe. Uh, I'm gonna use the clay brush first, just to add some some quick volumes like this. And I'm just thinking that this could be kind of like a visor. All right. Um, of course, this is pretty low res. So now uh, I just wanted to show you that bit. Um, one more thing before I move into this stage that I was going to show you is uh, I'm going to select this. Um, these shoulders and I'm gonna duplicate them and I'm gonna inflate them as well uh, just because I want to show you how you can do quick paneling um, with multiple subtools so this is just a duplicate if I go in solo mode these are the the thicker shoulder pads 
these are the smaller ones, the originals. So with the thicker ones, what I'll do is use the um, the knife lasso, right? And I can just go go ahead and do something like this. Oops, like that, maybe one at a time, right? So so I just cut through that model to create that panel, and maybe say, you know what, here closer to the body, it's gonna be like that or like that. I don't know. Maybe like this, right? So, that, so it allows for a little bit of movement. And then, yeah, that's it, <laughs> really. So this is just to to show that you can do the same thing um, and keep things with multiple sub tools uh, if you want. So if you, for example, want kind of like another piece on top of in this area, uh, where are we? Yep. Yeah, so you can duplicate inflate and then just quickly with the knife lasso oops go ahead and say you know let's remove this bit like that and i think i kind of like it like this actually Cool. So yeah, you know, you can start adding a little bit of um, layering to to the design, which is pretty cool. Um, the delete lower just deletes the amount of subdivision. So if I select the the head and click on subdivide, right? What Sirius does is subdivide the mesh. If I go back to the lower subdivision, I can you know I can go back and forth between lower and higher. If I'm in the higher one and delete lower. I just delete the ability to go back to the lowest subdivision. That's all. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and work on a little bit more of the def definition of this bulkier design. Um, let me just give a quick volume here with the clay brush to the legs. Alrighty. So um, yeah, what I'll do is I'm gonna switch to the dam standard brush with a small brush size. And of course, if I go to the head, for example, to this thing, um, I'm not entirely happy with the with the shape here. So I might just spend a bit more time here. It's gonna be pretty flat here anyway. Yeah, something like this, right? Um, so if I select the damp standard brush and I want to start defining this, I can do it to a degree, but if I want to be very precise about how I define the next uh, set of details, I can turn on Sculptris Pro and then whatever I select, even if it's this one that has pretty low res, Sculptris Pro is going to generate geometry right where I, where I need it. So you'll see it automatically creates these polygons and it will create those um, as I sculpt. So this is what I need, this is what I want to do um, with the Sculptris Pro. Alright, so um, I'm going to select the, the head. I want to try to define kind of like what I'm thinking in terms of the panels for the head. And this might take a while because, <laughs> as I said, I'm just designing things. So. There's gonna be a lot of undoes, I suppose. So for example, this one would probably have some kind of like gap in there. But this is like the fun part for me. Like I already have the block out or I already have the 
the basis of what I think works in terms of the silhouette. So now I'm just trying to think about the flow of the design. You know, maybe there's like a, a larger section in here. Um, and this is just to define it, then we can go ahead and, and work on the volume. So uh, for instance, if I like this area to be, um, you know, raised a little bit, I can use my custom masking brush, click OK. And I'm also, uh, we don't have a lot of resolution here. So if you don't have enough resolution, you can just hold the shift key to smooth an area. And if you have the sculptures enabled, that will create um, geometry. So basically, hold the, the shift key to smooth, and that will generate more uh, more geometry. So I can use the, the masking tool right now. Um, and this masking brush is part of a, um, a free kit, a free starting kit that I have in the, Zeroes, the Ultimate Zeroes Guide course. So um, you can grab that from the 3D Concept Artist. Just, um, just go to the resources, and it's called the Ultimate Zeroes Guide Started Kit. Uh, so yeah, so that creates this mask. I can invert that, select the Move Brush, and then just scale things up, or just move this that way. Uh, so the purpose of this is just literally to add a bit of, um, you know, visual interest in here, in this area that I just extruded. I can use the Smooth Brush again just to add geometry. So it doesn't look like a pixelated. Uh, sometimes when you use the Sculptures Pro, you'll end up with these holes. Uh, so every now and again, after using Sculptures Pro, or after doing a, a few things with Sculptures Pro, uh, what you can do is click on Close Holes, and that would close those holes. Uh, so for you guys, that would be under the Geometry, Modify, Topology, Close Holes. Right? Uh, but yeah, let's go back to the Dan Sander Brush to continue with this kind of like refinement process. And that's what I'm that's what I'm going to try to do throughout. Um probably I'm not going to waste too much time in here just because like I said, this is something that uh, takes, for me at least, it takes a while to, to generate something interesting. Um, and then I, I just see things that I don't see when I'm blocking. So for example, <laughs> this one right now, this piece, it's maybe too thick. So I can just do something like the inflate, right? Um, and that also helps to accentuate the fact that the other pieces are bulkier and bigger. So as I define or start defining this character, I start to also think about more about the you know the feasibility of the design I suppose and, and make sure that everything is balanced so like I said this thing is pretty you know pretty easy um, so I just deflated that uh, but then I can go ahead and use something like the uh, tubes again with a smaller brush size and then just do oh, I add the the default actions or the default uh, curve brush or curve tube brush um, creates the tubes based on a plane or a, whatever you click is going to be in a straight line. So if you go to Pika, click on uh, orientation, no depth, sorry, um, you can switch from 1C to continue C. And that basically means that ZBrush is going to continuously analyze the, sub the surface so that it applies the curvature based on the surface. If I do this, you see it just follows that curvature. So I can just take that um, and follow along this path just to create kind of like another another tube. Like that. Maybe another one. And maybe another one. Right, and I can do the same thing maybe from here. So these are just like design choices that I make as I go. Um, but this is the point that I I want to keep this very fluid, right?
and let's go ahead and append let's use the primitive cylinder i'm going to append one there So you see, just with a with a little bit of work, that sort of like starts to, yeah, you start to define things. And there's a lot of work to do on this type of thing, but um, it it is really fun to to play around with this at this stage. So um, let's go back to Dam Standard Rush with the Sculptris Pro, and let's go ahead and define some some panels. I'm gonna go for something more organic for these guys. Uh, probably need a bit more resolution. Uh, sorry, I was just looking at the at the channel. Um, looking good, cool. Hey, Jevin, how's it going? Uh, do I look tired? <laughs> no, I just you know what I, I I've get I've got this. Um, I'm not like super tired, but I I've got this a lot. Uh, sometimes like oh you look tired, or whatever. <laughs> and I'll tell you the truth. The truth is that when I'm designing, I tend to just squint my eyes quite a bit because I try to avoid the, the details. So if you squint your eyes, it's kind of like, it allows you to see a bit better the, the overall picture. So that's where I'm, <laughs> when I'm designing, I'm almost like like falling asleep, but it's not. It's just that um, it helps me focus on the, on the big picture. <laughs> um, it's kind of like the same thing as just going further away. Uh, but instead of doing that every time, I just like squint my eyes and see, okay, this is, it needs more details in here or, or not. Uh, but that's, that, <laughs> that's probably right. Um, Cool. Hey, hey, Fabiano. Bon dia. Uh, do I have a... Yeah, I do have a YouTube channel. Like, uh, if you just go to YouTube and type Pablo Munoz Gomez, I'll share it with you. In fact, um, I yesterday, the day before, I shared a, a brand new tutorial um, where I take a zero sketch, something that it could be even as rough as this, and send it to Marmoset. Uh, I might be able to show you this today if we have enough time. Uh, but yeah, so let me just share this in the chat. Um, it's hard surface needed like Blender. Uh, hang on. Do you, create, do you create your high poly realistic stuff with these series workflow as well as for instance your special forces called on our station yeah exactly the same thing i mean uh, obviously the, the thing is i usually start with a very sketchy thing because i like i myself like to design things in 3d um if you already have like a solid 2d concept if you're following a different concept there might be but i mean there might be a different approach to setting things up so instead of like having this very sketchy things that I like what I have right now, you might have something that's more control. So you can just build things that the base or like the geometry base is is a lot cleaner than what I have here because, you know, <laughs> this is what I have, which is not ideal. Um, so it depends on the workflow and depends on what you're trying to achieve. But uh, roughly speaking, my process is the same as in very sketchy, very rough at the beginning. And then little by little, I start to polish things to um, you know, to the level that I want to, but it depends on where I want to, you know, where I want to end up. Um, yeah, so that, that was the, the YouTube channel. E, um, hang on. Or is hard surface need like Blender or Maya? Oh, sorry. That was part of the questions. Um, no, I, I, I don't treat hard surface or, or, you know, this type of more organic stuff any, any different, really. It's just the, the polishing process is slightly different but it's it's ultimately the same thing like you can polish things that look like more of a hard surface or, or not um, another thing you can use as well for this process is holding the alt key and that sharpens that as well so that helps to kind of like accentuate the planes if you will 
for a, a hard surface bit. So like I said, it's all, it's all about how you decide to, yeah, <laughs> how do you decide to polish things? But even at this stage, I can, I'm can. i pretty sure I can make something that looks decent um, that I can render out and don't have to go into like lots of details. Um, maybe, uh, yeah, I, I usually lose, lose track of time. <laughs> uh, so if anyone in the chat, like let me know maybe 20 minutes before um, the end of the stream. So I finished up in about 40 minutes. So if you let me know in you know, 40 minutes time, it's sorry, in 20 minutes time, um, I might be able to just show you that process a little bit. But if not, it's in the, it's in the YouTube channel. Um, Doing this very quickly, I, I I would usually spend more time. Um, just so you know, like it's, this is not a a process that should be rushed. Um, but again, I wanna give you a a rough idea of what I'm doing. <laughs> um, okay, so I need more volume in here. So instead of there's a few things we can do. I just push this to create like a like a hole in there. Um, so I can take the underlying arm right, the one that we set up first, and then just use the move brush to push that in there. And that's probably big, you know, that's probably enough. Yeah, I think that's enough. Or you can just add another piece in there. Let's go back to Dumps Thunder Brush. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna split these right in the middle in here, like a panel right there. And then we can just, work around this this piece. Right, but it's it's pretty you know, it's pretty um I would say relaxing <laughs> to work this way. Let's use the uh clay brush again. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but you can use any brush, really, like the standard brush as well, just to add more volume. There we go. Um, this piece right here, I want to clean this a bit more, so um, I can just dynamesh this, right? And then you go with the with the sculptor's pro, and I'm just gonna smooth out those edges so it doesn't feel as as harsh. Same thing with these; we can dynamize with a higher resolution, just the entire piece. And I'm gonna use the clay brush here just to add volume. All right, so you know, bit by bit, you'll see how this has started to to look a bit more interesting. Um, I want to maintain that kind of like organic feel, even though this will be like a hard material, right? Uh, I want to maintain that organic surface, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, sometimes, yeah, that doesn't. That's a little bit ab too abstract, but hopefully you know what I mean. It's like the, the flow of this design. I want to maintain the... Yeah, I want to maintain that. <laughs> um, all right, let's do the paneling in here. And, and then we can use something like the, uh, the tube brush again, coming from the elbow, maybe the smaller brush size. Like that. Oh, I 
want to make a single tube. For some reason, it's not letting me do it. Yeah, it's great. It shouldn't behave like that, but anyway, I'll just restart Sibir Shafta. And I'm going to split mass points so that we can have two different pieces in here. All right. Um, Cool. So let's. Ah, oh, hang on. There's something else I wanted to do here. All right. I think. <laughs> hang on. Like I said, this this process is um, is really fun, but this is what I spend a lot of the time as well after the blocking. So I'm rushing it a little bit, and maybe this part needs to be broken into two pieces, so it can let's say function properly. Alright, cool. So um I'm gonna use the move brush and just adjust some of the, the shapes. I'm gonna use the inflate brush and just add this kind of bulkiness here. Maybe use the clay brush with the uh the alt key just to push things in. Maybe we have some kind of like lanterns or not lanterns, um just torches or lights in there. Um Let's refine this a little bit. So all of this is with the Sculptris Pro. So it creates that, that geometry as I as I go. And that's what I love about um, Sculptris Pro, really. It's going to solo mode. I'm going to push things with the Alt key. There we go. I um, just wanted to, to kind of like break that silhouette a little bit. Um, let me show you what I mean. So. I wanted to be able to cut through that silhouette in there. That's the reason I pulled that in there. Um, just to create a bit more of a, again, visual interest. Uh, let's use the damp standard brush again, just to sharpen those. But yeah, you see every piece, what I'm doing with every piece, everything is super, um, super sketchy. Uh, we might have to pull these back a bit. There we go. All right. Cool. So um, yeah, we we're getting there. Or we're getting not there, but somewhere. <laughs> um. The next thing that I'd like to show you guys would be uh, kind of like the next level in the in the blocking stage. And we can use some IMM brushes for that. And that will just, you know, take it to the next level. Still really sketchy and still, you know, there, there will be a lot of room for uh, playing around with, you know, shapes and everything that I'm doing at the moment, but it will make it look a, a, a lot interest, a lot more interesting. Let me just pull this one here. Because I think it's the, the kneecap that uh, is bothering me the most. Because I, I really didn't think it through. <laughs> I just put a, a piece in there. That was it. Um, Let's go with that for now. And 
let's define this a little bit more because these are these are weird shoes. Okay. All right. So um, you know, we started with something that was pretty pretty blocky, and now I think we we come to a point where you can kind of like see where the the character is going. Um, we haven't touched the the backpack thingy, uh, but I think this is gonna be just the base, and it's gonna be more interesting. <laughs> All right. Let's just define this quickly. It's not gonna be. Yeah, let's do this. I think for now that's that's good. Um, yeah, the the bag needs lots of work as well. But we'll we'll get there eventually. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, the the next thing, like I said, it would be to play around with some uh, some tools some insert brushes to add more levels of details and some reference of where you might want to put the details as well. Uh, so that would be cool. Uh, let's see. Was that quick sketch you use in the starting of the stream to create? Was that quick? Yeah, that was quick sketch. That's right. Um, cool. Oh, glad that you glad, glad to hear that, Darren. That you're learning something. <laughs> That's what I'm doing these streams for. Um, cool. Oh, thanks so much, Hugo. Saludos desde Chile. Awesome. Um, can you sketch on the mesh or while you're sculpting the mesh? Also, concepting the sculpting together might be useful. Um, yeah, you can use polypaint to do that. That that would be kind of like the next thing that I was gonna show you. Um, how to use kind of like polypaint to define materials and stuff like that. Cool. Um, Rave two. Can I have the file of the UI or the U of your screen configuration? Um, you can go to my YouTube channel. Um, there is a video where I show you how you can uh, create your own UI and in that UI in that video you have a link to download that so let me just find it for you uh, the name is called custom UI in ZBrush or cost yeah customizing the ZBrush UI with a purpose so I'm gonna share that in there there we go so that video, if you go to the description, there is a file for right-handed people. So all those things that you can see here on the right-hand side, um, like myself, I'm right-handed, or for left-handed people, those elements will be on the left-hand side. Um, all righty. So let's go ahead and do what I just said. So I'm going to use, you know, something. Let's use basic stuff. So I'm going to use IMM primitives. I'm going to select the cylinder. Make sure, um, yeah, symmetry is enabled. And instead of just adding them randomly, uh, what I, well, what I can do is let's start with the with this. So I'm gonna add this in here and place them properly. So it's kind of like a Mega Man type of tool, but you know, it's it's one of those um, yeah back or jetpacks. So it will use the hands or like the arms to sort of like propel himself to in the air so this is this is going to be one right and get into solo mode so i just added them randomly into the legs so what i'll do is split that to unmask points so now i can select that piece and this piece is going to be where i'm going to add all the the other pieces so i can just select um you know what let's select a white color go to plugin 
uh, sub tool master I'm gonna click on fill just color click OK so ZBrush is automatically filling every, si every single sub tool with the same color and now I can take this one let's give it a just a, maybe a, crude, a yellowish tone like that so I know that anything that I add now is going to be in that in that tool um, cool so I'm gonna use this and let's let's add a couple of things I'm also gonna push things in quite a bit and this tool right here is under the brush palette curve uh, depth <laughs> sorry this one right here and that basically when you drag and drop or drag and drop drag and, and create something is going to be embedded into the mesh a lot more so if I push it even further you see it's gonna be a lot more if I leave it where it was it's just gonna be like that so let's just push it even more just to add something in there uh, same thing maybe from for this area and of course every time that you add a new IMM piece the Siri is going to automatically mask out the rest, so that allows you to bring in the gizmo and do exactly what I'm doing. Right? Um, I'll continue with more pieces, but I just want to show you that the the reason I use these simple pro or these simple primitives, right, is because I can clear the mask, go into solo mode, turn on polyframe, um, and I can f ed you know edit them further. So, for example, these ones, I can use the C modeler, I can click right click on um edge go insert for example or i can just hold the alt key and tag all of these points right click on the face go to insert click and drag and just create another loop in there maybe something like this then click or right click on the polygroup and q mesh polygroup sorry so basically using the q mesh to extract or you know do anything with the QMesh that's the action and the target is going to be this polygroup that I created so I click and drag and I can hold the alt key while I'm dragging to just change the different polygroups and let's do the same thing right click maybe insert polygroup all so I can insert that a little bit like that and then push that oops go back to QMesh put that in like so um, and maybe we can right click as well and bevel stuff right um, so even if I you know use the, the sculptures pro and change these um, at least that gives me a nicer looking piece <laughs> um, so yeah I just wanted to show you that you can totally do that um, and we can go to the clay brush select that piece of the arm right and with the sculptures pro enable I'm just gonna push it holding the all key and that creates that more of a of a hole in there. Uh, but yeah, this is the reason. Just going back to what I was saying, that's the reason I chose um, the IMM primitives that come with Sirush. That's pretty pretty easy. Um, okay, so for this one as well, another thing you can do is with the C modeler, we can go ahead and isolate these points whoops <laughs> select lasso sorry to isolate that right and control w to assign a single polygroup and then we can click oops, click on this polygroup and then if you hold the shift key you can change the distance basically or like pushing the the polygroup that you choose along their normal so i can just make kind of like a thinner uh rim this um you know and then i can you know continue playing around with this so for example let's um let's insert this in the same way that we did before like so then q mesh that as well then insert once more sorry not that one right click insert and then one more Q mesh. Right, and then right click, bevel. Um, yeah, so this would be
something a bit more interesting with the with the light would be and that just took a just took a couple of minutes <laughs> or seconds uh let's use the clay brush again just to ad adjust this there we go and let's go back to this one and continue adding some some details hopefully i can get to yeah in the next five minutes i'll just jump into uh, show you how you can render it with marmoset for example um many times while concepting and creating a block out sketching while well, sculpting is very useful for, for mastering your skills like 2d and 2d together uh the polypen yeah um cool so i'm gonna use this and i think um this one could be a cool one to add here for the the kind of like helmet thing and the thing is that these are you know potentially not necessarily <laughs> details you can still use um these brushes or these IMM brushes to to add that type of thing. So um, I'm gonna use this cylinder as well to kind of like create connections. Uh, hopefully you n will see what I mean. And again, this might change in the future quite a bit, but. For now, I think it works um, works nicely. And I'm going to use the cylinder as well, just to block some stuff in here. And you can also hold the control key and duplicate a piece. So you don't have to, you know, if you want to keep the same sort of size of it, be consistent um, you can do that as well I don't know if I'm gonna leave this as it is but just to indicate some kind of like joints in there it's fine um, I think I'm gonna also create one in here but this one is just going to be kind of like the recipient of some tubes that I can that I can create along the the arm Right, so not everything would be details. Sometimes it will be just, you know, cool bits and pieces. <laughs> All right. I think roughly you get the idea of what I'm trying to achieve here. Um, might need to add some some kind of like fuel tanks. Again, at this point, I'm just having fun with the with the ideas of the concepts that I that I had at the beginning, and just kind of like exploring what I could use uh, this this um, these meshes for, really. So maybe that yeah, that's kind of like a tank in there. Um, I'm gonna use the move brush to adjust this a tiny bit, just to account for the new ideas that I brought into to this. So yeah, hopefully you can see this is very a very organic process. Um, for example, if I want to create kind of like a strap or something that goes around it, you, you can use the same geometry or you can just, you know, quickly mask. Let's add a bit of geometry just with smooth brush. Then quickly mask an area like so. 
invert that mask and then use the gizmo um, to sort of like push that <laughs> like this and then clear the mask use the smooth brush to add the, the geometry and yeah you can just polish it after so you see pretty organic stuff is just having fun with the design and, and figuring things out as you go um, maybe for this one what I'll do just to show you something else before I move into the, the last bit um, similar to what we did before I'm gonna hold control and shift to isolate this one split hidden so this is kind of like its own thing now um, if you want to make it a bit smoother you can use dynamic subdivision as well uh, but another thing you can do is let's apply dynamic subdivision so we have three levels of subdivision maybe one more right so we have subdivision levels we can with the masking brushes or the mask lasso you can do this type of stuff just to select a mask area and then you can go to the extract click on extract and that would literally create an extract piece like you see here uh, you'll have to accept it so if you're happy with this you click accept I'm gonna make it thicker so increase that thickness extract yep accept clear the mask go back to this one clear the mask so now this is a separate piece following that sort of contour area we can dynamesh it maybe a bit more resolution right I'm just gonna give it a white color and just tweak the volumes a bit so this is part of the that backpack thingy <laughs> and yeah this is just how that cylinder is being held in place but obviously this wasn't in the first blocking and that's what I wanna kinda like point you um, or just try to draw your attention to that 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 wasn't part of the the plan but as you define it as you start you know playing around with the design those are the type of things that can come up and you should be able to recognize that opportunity and and yeah see if that works and if it doesn't you just get rid of it but that's the idea um how do you add the similar button to the normal uh to the normal similar brush icon in the ui how do you uh hang on let me just get this right how do you add the similar button and not the normal similar brush like ah all right so you're talking about this this is just a macro it's not it's not a button that comes with zbrush i i made that uh so basically what this does is uh it records so you can just go to macro click on new macro and it will start recording whatever action you do in, in zbrush so what i did was i started recording a macro and i went to the c modeler so like this what i'm doing so you can start recording and click on z modeler brush uh, and then I also change the brush size to something very very tiny and I also enable polyframe um, so that when I work with C modeler this is what I want to see and then if I want to go back to the move brush uh, at this point I would stop the macro and then create a new macro that goes All right let's turn this off increase the brush size and select the where is it <laughs> the move brush where's the move brush right so uh, those those are the buttons that I have here so they're custom macros so you'll see if I select this one I can click on Zimola and it does what I just told you it just selects the brush enables polyframe and the brush size is pretty tiny so I can work with that or click on move brush and it goes back to what I was doing that's just to speed up the workflow uh, would you ever go down in subdivisions to play with it once you got that level um, at this point everything is still pretty sketchy I'm not like I would only use subdivision levels once I'm polishing a surface uh, properly and that will come after so yeah okay we have 15 minutes left uh, left so I'm just going to use maybe one more thing uh, let's use the IMM model kit so I'm gonna use this oops make sure I have the right one selected there we go trying to figure out I want to have kind of like a something like that maybe at the back actually it's 
So I'm just using the IMM brush model kit uh, because it has some pieces that have already a bit more detail. So um, yeah, we can play around with some ideas for the details as well. Like this one. Uh, this one that would be oh this one would be pretty cool like kind of like a laser beam or something yeah that, that's kind of cool um let's use these large bolts uh, one thing that you can do when you using these insert brushes, uh, this is something that I would do once everything is a bit more uh, well defined. Because if I move the the large volumes, it it might just covers them. But if you want, you can just set the brush size, hold Control, and then it will maintain that brush size. So I can just hold Control, do that, click Control, click Control. So whatever you click, they're going to be the same size basically. So let's do that. I'm gonna make it pretty. Pretty big and bulky. But they are all the same size if I hold control. Again, all of these details might just go, <laughs> but I, it's good to have them as a as a quick reference. Right? Uh, make sure. Have the same color. Oh, sorry. Fill object. There we go. Um, cool. I think I'm also gonna select this bit. I'm gonna isolate that one. Split hidden. And just because I wanna make something nicer here, so with a similar, I'm gonna right click, bevel, <laughs> bevel, bevel that, um, and then maybe using the Model kit is again. That's gonna be, yeah, something like that. All right, so that's just um, you know, quick reference of the details and the fact that um, I'm using the the yellow color that helps us as, as well to, yeah, to identify where I'm placing the details. But hopefully that helps. All right, I'm I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave it yeah because then we start to to get too crazy with the with the details right now so just gonna add a bit of resolution to these bits All right, I think we we are in a pretty good place to to try out the the Marmoset workflow that I mentioned, uh, which is what I covered in the the new tutorial that I have in my YouTube channel. But just to give you an idea how easy this is, um, I haven't saved that also. <laughs> Let's just do a quick save. Um, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and use the standard brush um, and just give it this this guy some some quick poly paint pass. Um, so let's select everything, just white color. And uh, so I, I think I'm going to go for kind of like a cream 
color like that. So plugin, fill, color, everything. Right? And then we can just play around with some variations of that, like dark dark bits, like this, fill object. Kind of like the the inside areas. Or just manually paint it as well. These tubes could actually be wider. That's kind of like the palette that I'm probably gonna I'm gonna go for. Quite desaturated. But again, yeah, we can mix and match materials, of course. Um, I'm doing this like really quickly, but we can do that sort of stuff. And that just helps to indicate what material is what. Um, again, this comes down to like the design things. I was doing my squinting in there as well, because <laughs> um, when I'm when I'm doing that, you know, the block out of the palette, that also helps. And I start to suggest some some ideas for the design. You can do also Sculptures Pro just with color, by the way. So that that could be another easy way to accentuate or, or fine-tune the the gaps or the panels that you're doing so right now I'm not adding any um, any volume or changing the volume I'm just adding adding color uh, but anyway so let's let's just do a um, Let's mer merge visible. So I'm gonna go to merge visible. Oh, we have five minutes left. Yeah, that's plenty. So with this one, I'm just gonna compute the ambient occlusion just to accentuate the some of the, the gaps. <laughs> um, and then just do that. And yeah, that's it. Maybe add a bit of highlights here with the, let's go with the, Alpha 8. Just very subtle. Just to add a kind of like dirtiness. Um, cool. All right, so we are done with this. I'm gonna show you how I would approach the, you know, a quick render pass. Hang on, sorry. Just wanted to paint this one. Uh, what group? So um yeah, so this is kind of like the the rough sketch, um, which I think could be quite um useful for um you know for future defining this maybe in the next stream, um see how we go. But uh basically if we go ahead and click on the proportional, which is under the document palette, uh document document. Yeah, so so that's, that's, those are the things that I have in my UI. I'm gonna set this to be um, 1,500 by 1,500. Uh, this doesn't matter as long as it is a square. Resize, yes. And that's it. So um, now what I'll do is bring in the um, C plugin. 
again, for a more kind of like in-depth version of what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna do it really quickly, uh, you can have a look at that tutorial that I just shared um, before in my YouTube channel. So uh, this is a plugin that I um, that I developed with Joseph Drost. Um, well, actually he developed it. I, it was just my workflow and then kind of like collaborated, <laughs> but he was the one who coded the whole thing. Uh, but it's called the Sirius Compositor right here. Uh, you can click on the Sirius Compositor and kind of like get um, a reference of how this works. If you click on this um, video or this thumbnail, it will send you to the Sirius Guides section where my, um, my full introduction to this compositor is. So you can also watch that. Uh, but anyway, it's this. So um, all I have to do is let's find, um, let's select a, you know, different color for the background. Could be just, uh, you know, that dark. It doesn't matter, you won't see the, the background just so that you can see it in here. I'm gonna click on A have, and I'm just gonna find a nice angle for this character. Um, I'm gonna place it there, right? So this is gonna be my render, and you choose the camera angle from ZBrush, and then I'm just gonna select, um, yeah, for 248 is fine. Um, the S normal so that it actually creates uh, smooth out the normals, although this one is pretty smooth. Uh, but let's say, for example, the these bits here, you can see the faceted polygons. So that's what this does. If you enable it, it just smooth that smooth that out. Um, that's it. All you have to do is select what type of um, PBR workflow you want. So I prefer metal roughness. So if not, you can use you can click and click and create a specular glossiness. I'm just gonna leave it as metal roughness and click on create toolback composite. So um, yeah, that will create a scene in toolbag. Obviously, you have to have the Marmoset toolbag um, for this to work, and it also works with a Substance 3D Painter or Adobe 3D Painter. So what Sirius is doing right now is creating a series of passes or yeah textures, you know, renders, BPRs. Ultimately, um, hang on, I have it in my other screen. So it creates a bunch of different passes, and then I'm gonna bring in. Marmoset, right? And yeah, basically it creates a render here. So I'm just gonna select a different sky. So this is how I create like these quick concepts. And I'm gonna add a light. Just gonna move things around. Uh, but I just wanna show you. So. This one right here is the camera angle that we chose in ZBrush. This one right here is what actually the plugin does. So it just creates a plane 3D, right? It just is a simple plane. Um, so it has its limitation, obviously, because it's just a plane, and it uses the displacement that we created in ZBrush or that the plugin automatically creates in ZBrush, and it displays that plane. <laughs> so you can select it, uh, you can subdivide it. Let's turn this on. A few times. So the more you subdivide that plane, the the better it will look like the, the details. Uh, so obviously you need to render it from the front camera. So it's not obviously, you know, something that you can move around. But if you don't like this uh, pose or you want to produce more of this, you can just simply switch to um, Sirius again, change the camera angle and re-render. Uh, so let's see, where is the... Where's the lighting? Yeah. Here's the light. So I think, and these are all the maps that were created as well. So I think I'm just going to change the roughness and the metalness. Um, missiveness, this one map. Yeah, the missiveness, this one map that is not working for me. Yeah, the polypaint. So I, I, I left the material. I shouldn't, yeah, should have used a different material actually. Um, but yeah, the material is kind of like an important one. <laughs> so uh, you could have just changed that. But anyway, I think that's fine. And I'm just going to use ray tracing. Right. Um, so I can just move and rotate the environment and you'll see what this does. Maybe change the roughness a bit and the metalness 
the missiveness is uh, actually using the subsurface scattering. How are we doing with time? Okay, I have to finish. Ah, I won't be able to show you. You know, the full explanation is in the in the YouTube channel anyway. Um, but what's cool about this is it allows you to play around with things like lighting. So I can just do maybe bluish tone in here. Um, I'm also going to change this scale because I think the scale is a little bit too big. So let's go for 10. Uh, not 10, sorry, 0.1 then. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but then we can also create another light from a different angle. So it's just a, a quick way to generate like concepts. Right? So you have everything is just a plane, but if you render this out, um, you know, you can play around with materials. And if you don't like that, you can just, you know, change it completely, get rid of the, I don't know, the the normals, <laughs> the, the albedo, and then you just have like a clay render. Um, again, these, these faceted polygons, all of this is just because of the resolution of the plane. So you can subdivide it one more time and that just should fix some of these. There we go. Um, a little bit of a blurriness to it. Cool. So obviously, like I said, there are limitations because this is ultimately just rendering a single plane. <laughs> but um, yeah, for the sake of this demonstration, I think it, it, it works just fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to delete these two. Um, yeah, and the alpha, by the way, the alpha is just using the normal alpha in ZBrush. So you'll see this is the full plane. And then if I enable the alpha, that's kind of like what you see. Um, you can also play around in directly in Marmoset by adding a shadow catcher. Although it's just gonna try to catch <laughs> the plane, so you'll have to rotate it around like this. Uh, but it's kind of like you know giving you a, a rough idea. So yeah, you can definitely do something really interesting with just a, a simple click. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna save anything, and and that's what the what the plugin does. In case you're interested as well, and it's a free plugin you can download from the um, from the Pixel Logic Download Center website uh, but yeah so I'm gonna leave it here guys thank you so much for uh, tuning in hopefully this this helps um, yeah I'm gonna leave it today <laughs> at this at this stage just one more thing in case uh, you're not um, you were not here when I share this uh, you can already subscribe to kind of like the whitelist of um, the asset library so it's a uh, is my upcoming live workshop where I'm gonna teach you how to do like high high quality assets um, for ZBrush, you know, PBR, render, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so it's not, I, I haven't de decided the, the, the dates yet, but you can definitely go and, and register here and you'll be the first to know once I publish this. So, um, so you can just uh, enroll in that one. So that's the, uh, yeah, that's the uh, <laughs> link that I just sent you. All right. So cool, I'm gonna leave it here and next week, or not next week, in a couple of weeks, uh, we can continue with this guy if you're interested in this, this type of stuff. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it here and I will see you in a